Tri-weave titanium coated armor plate. Nice. Unless you know exactly where to shoot. Do you know what I'm thinking right now? <laughs> of course. You're thinking, who the hell is this guy? You want to know what I want now? I want you dead. I want you to take a look at these three scenes. As straightforward as they may appear, I believe taking a deeper look at what these three moments show us can help us figure out why exactly the Arkham Knight failed as a character, and why he is considered by many to be a disappointment. Before we begin, I want to stress that I'm not saying you're wrong if you like this character. In fact, there are quite a few things that I think are really cool about the Arkham Knight, but I think it's important to understand that a lot of people were let down by how he was used in this game, and I believe these scenes can help us understand why that is the case. But as always, this video is simply expressing my opinion, and I'd love to hear what you have to say in the comments. Along with the Batmobile, underwhelming boss fights, and numerous Riddler trophies that were both challenging and very time-consuming to collect, one of the most common criticisms of Batman Arkham Knight is the identity of the Arkham Knight himself. Most fans felt disappointed, let down, and straight up angry when the identity of this mysterious new enemy turned out to be the Fallen Boy Wonder. Most players agree that it was extremely obvious as they got further into the game that it was Jason Todd who was behind the mask, and this led to the surprise reveal becoming more of a confirmation of what they had already known. Before before we look at these three moments, I'll start by mentioning a few things that this game gets right. Having Jason Todd in any Batman game is a plus, regardless of how his inclusion is used. His popularity has greatly increased because of his new persona as the Red Hood, and Batman Arkham Knight provided his first major debut in a video game. This is more of a subjective thing, but I really like what they did with his costume. It has a very practical and militaristic feel that works well with his suit and cowl. I really enjoy two of his three boss fights, and while the Cloudburst tank fight can be annoying, I appreciate the challenge and added difficulty it brings brings to the game. The recordings involving dialogue between him and Barbara are a nice addition, and it's unfortunate most people probably didn't even realize that they existed on their first playthrough. But the best part about this character is by far the voice actor. Casting Troy Baker in any role is a guaranteed win, and his performance was extremely well done, being able to perfectly capture Jason's anger and pain through just his voice. Everything about the Arkham Knight indicates that this character should be an automatic success. He's a skilled mercenary who has extensive knowledge of Batman, uses guns, looks awesome, and commands an entire army. And while on paper it sounds like a grand slam, the Arkham Knight's true problem comes from the way he's written and introduced. You can have all these great elements, but it's how these elements are used and put together that dictates how well the character is received. Titanium coated armor plate. Nice. Unless you know exactly where to shoot. <laughs> You're good, Dark Knight. Even better than I remember. It's gonna make it even more satisfying when I kill you. Oh, and don't worry about Barbara. I'll take better care of her than you ever did. Batman's in the control room. Show him what happens when he messes with my On the surface, this scene is actually pretty cool. It demonstrates the Arkham Knight's intel on Batman and shows that he is a dangerous opponent. But if one looks a little closer, there are multiple problems that can be found in this scene. First off, many people probably wondered why the Arkham Knight didn't just shoot Batman in the mouth or somewhere where it would actually kill him. This is explained when Batman first confronts the Arkham Knight at Ace Chemicals. While this makes sense in the context of the story, it shows that the Arkham Knight is not really the main villain of the story and is taking orders from someone else, in this case, Scarecrow. While this is not necessarily a bad thing on its own, it means that the Arkham Knight is constantly being overshadowed by Scarecrow and more importantly, the Joker. He is not the main threat of this game, but there is still a chance that he can have a big impact. While Scarecrow and Joker focus on defeating Batman's mind, Jason provides a physical threat with his militia and own tactics. 
tactics. But all of that is undermined when Scarecrow orders Jason not to kill Batman. This means that whenever the opportunity arises for him to finish the Dark Knight, as it does in this scene, he doesn't take it but it gets even worse. After he ignores Scarecrow's orders later in the game and decides to try to kill Batman anyway, he fails. Not once, not twice, but at least three times. So we have a villain who isn't allowed to kill Batman for the first half of the game, followed by the same villain failing to kill Batman every time he tries. This does not help the Arkham Knight look like a threat to the player because Batman is constantly foiling the Arkham Knight's plans. The second problem that can be shown in this scene is right after Batman is shot. Despite the fact that a bullet wound often is an extremely painful and dangerous wound to have, Batman simply injects himself with something and is able to walk it off, defeating groups of thugs with relative ease despite being shot minutes before. This illustrates the second problem with the Arkham Knight's character, which is that most of the stuff he does has no real consequence. The Arkham Knight shoots Batman and Batman can just magically heal himself. The Arkham Knight kidnaps Barbara and then has Barbara kill herself with Scarecrow's fear toxin. Well, no, it's fine because she's actually still alive. The Arkham Knight releases the Cloudburst all over Gotham. Well, no, it's fine because Poison Ivy disperses the gas in less than an hour. The Arkham Knight destroys the Bat Tank. No problem, Lucius built another one. I'm not saying it's a bad thing to have villains' actions be undone because that's basically what happens in the endings of most superhero stories. But when they're undone almost right away and frequently, it makes any accomplishments the character had underwhelming. Even Scarecrow is able to permanently affect Batman when revealing his identity, but the Arkham Knight does basically nothing that leaves a lasting impact. While individual moments help show the Arkham Knight to be a dangerous foe, there aren't that many to be found. Most of the time, the Arkham Knight either fails at doing something or his accomplishments are undone relatively quickly. I will say that his ability to stay out of Batman's reach for most of the game is considerably impressive, but the only thing I feel like Jason gets to accomplish that actually leaves an impact is rescuing Batman at the end of the game, which happens when Jason is no longer the villain. I'm probably exaggerating a bit, but my point is that there isn't really anything Jason accomplishes that helps overcome the more important issues with his character. Some villains, despite failing to Batman countless times, have their unique personality or dialogue to keep the players entertained whenever they're on screen, but Jason doesn't really have that. He's supposed to be more dangerous than entertaining, and the Arkham Knight's dialogue always seems to involve only two things, either how much he hates Batman and wants to kill him, or how much he knows about the Dark Knight. But that's not even Jason's biggest problem. Always defending the weak and the helpless. That's what I like about you. Predictable. And that's why we're gonna win. We know your move before you do. We know how you think! Do you know what I'm thinking right now? <laughs> of course. You're thinking, who the hell is this guy? This scene shows us probably the biggest problem with the Arkham Knight's character, and that has to do with his entire introduction. With Rocksteady telling us that he was a new character, fans were already eager to uncover his mysterious identity. But by making his identity a mystery, Rocksteady set themselves up for failure, because not only did they have to introduce Jason Todd, his history with Batman, and his reason for hating him, but they also had to introduce the Arkham Knight in a way that wouldn't have the players connecting the dots and realizing that they were actually the same person. Person. This game foolishly tries to pull off both, and by doing so, it compromises both the character and the twist. There is no surprise if you knew who he was five hours ago. By focusing on the mystery of the character, any positive elements of Jason's appearance becomes overshadowed by the disappointment of how easy it was to figure out who the Arkham Knight was in the first place. An example of how this could be fixed can be shown in the 2011 film Batman Under the Red Hood. In this story, even non-comic book fans can easily tell that Jason and Todd is the Red Hood from the very beginning of the film, and instead of trying to hide that fact, the movie uses that to its advantage. By showing Jason's death at the beginning of the film, it shows the audience what will drive his motivations later in the story and make us actually care for the character. To put it simply, putting Jason's story in the spotlight does a better job of showing his motivations instead of showing them through random flashbacks in the middle of the game. Because so much time is spent on the mystery and the fact that Batman doesn't know who this guy is, there is hardly any time left over to focus on the impact of his return. All we get is a single boss fight where Jason essentially says the same stuff he's told Batman, while Bruce tries to convince Jason to come back to the light. 
After that, Jason disappears, comes back to appear in a single shot near the end, and that's it. That's all we get afterwards, along with 10 minutes of DLC. Meanwhile, Under the Red Hood gives plenty of time to focus on Jason's motivations and the unique conflict he has with Batman, mostly because we know it's Jason underneath the mask, but also because he gets long pieces of dialogue that really flesh out the anger he has towards Bruce and what he's trying to prove. All of that is something that is missing from the Arkham Knight, because the game decides to focus on the twist instead of what makes Jason special as a character. You always told me, Bruce, focus on what I want to achieve. And it'll happen. You want to know what I want now, Mom? I want you dead. You can't hide from me! I will hunt you down! Most people probably look at the Red Hood and think he's popular because he uses guns as much more violent than Batman, and the fact that he's an anti-hero instead of a hero. And while on the surface that is somewhat true, there is a lot more complexity to the character that makes him different from characters like the Punisher. Jason Todd represents Batman's greatest failure and believes that killing only the most dangerous killers is justice, but also has a much lower regard for human life in general. Batman Under the Red Hood puts Jason's and Batman's beliefs at odds with with one another, causing Jason to try to get Batman to see his point of view. Showing the unique ideas that Jason brings is best explained by this scene. Bruce, I forgive you for not saving me. But why? Why on God's earth? Is he still alive? Ignoring what he's done in the past, blindly, stupidly disregarding the entire graveyards he's filled, the thousands who have suffered the friends he's crippled. You know, I thought... I thought I'd be the last person you'd ever let him hurt. If it had been you that he'd beat to a bloody pulp, if he had taken you from this world, I would have done nothing but search the planet for this pathetic pile of evil death-worshipping garbage and send him off to hell! While this shows a character that is complex and engaging, the Arkham Knight takes the same event, namely Jason's death, and decides to take the less complex and more generic approach. He's not trying to prove a point, he's just a man who hates Batman. And here's the thing, because of the lack of complexity, it kind of makes sense that Jason is the Arkham Knight rather than the Red Hood, because these are two entirely different characters. One has a more compelling story that is extremely personal to both Jason and Bruce, while the other is just a typical villain motivation. I'm not saying that this idea of the villain hating the hero for not saving them is a bad idea, but when it comes to Jason Todd in particular, there's so much more that could be done with the character besides him wanting revenge. Even the Red Hood doesn't have revenge against Joker as his main priority, which provides a much more layered and compelling story. Instead of trying to prove that Batman was wrong, he just wants to kill him, plain and simple. I also find it odd that Jason never really addresses the Joker's death in this game. This feels like a missed opportunity because Joker's death could have helped create some really interesting dialogue, but instead, Jason decides to simply blame everything on Batman. I understand that the Joker essentially brainwashes Jason right before he kills him, but I feel like it would have been more interesting to see what Jason thought of the Joker's death in Arkham City. Jason Todd in this game is not like the Red Hood we know. He's missing a lot of things that make Jason special and unique, and as such, makes him much less interesting. But there's also another big problem this scene shows us. When the character was first announced, a lot of people had different theories on who the Arkham Knight could be. Some fans thought it could be Jason, the Joker, Damian Wayne, Nightwing, Robin, Scarecrow, Thomas Wayne, Wayne Bruce Batman's Brad, brother, as much. Out of all the characters they chose, my question is, why did they choose Jason? They've already taken away his unique motivation and plan, so what gain is there by making him the main villain? To be honest, I don't think there is any benefit. The Arkham Knight's motivations are so baseline that you could replace Jason with any of these characters along with making a few minor adjustments, and the story would remain relatively the same. I understand that they chose Jason due to his popularity, but if you're going to go away from the elements that make Jason's conflict with Bruce interesting, just do something else. Red Hood 
Alfred's anger towards Batman is much deeper and more complicated than the Arkham Knights, and that's what makes me think they should have chosen a different character. What I'm trying to get at here is I think Jason shouldn't have been the Arkham Knight, because the Arkham Knight does not represent the same things that Jason represents. You can still have Red Hood in this game, but making him the Arkham Knight drastically alters his character to the point where he doesn't work the same way that the Red Hood does. In the end, there were a lot of things that eventually gave way to the downfall of the Arkham Knight. The amazing voice acting and the fun boss fights were not enough to overcome the obvious twist and lack of complexity that the character had. With Gotham Knights coming out very soon, I'm excited to see what WB Montreal does with Jason, and I hope he is written in a way that makes him extremely compelling and someone we want to root for. Looking back at the Arkham Knight, it's clear that the execution did not meet the vision of the character, and while there may have been some potential for the Arkham Knight, it has been lost under an enormous sea of disappointment. I don't hate Jason Todd in this game, far from it, but I know the character deserved a lot better than what we got, and hopefully other stories let us see the Jason we all know and love. Thank you so much for watching, if you like what you saw, you can find more videos like it on my channel, and maybe someday I'll earn your subscription. Until then, I'll see you next time.